Hello and welcome back to EF2000 Retro. Over the last three weeks I have been working on a first update for the EF2000 Retro add-on for Falcon BMS and this update is now readily available. In this video I like to introduce you to this new update and the most important changes. I have included installation instructions and change log in the video description and I will likely need to create a command below this video where I can add the direct download link as this is currently still not possible in visual descriptions for me. You can also find all relevant information in the official Falcon BMS forums I've created a thread there titled EF2000 Retro V1.00 for Falcon BMS 4.37.7 and there I keep the opening post updated with links change log information so that there's everything readily available and of course in the news and release section of my official EF2000 Retro Discord server I have also included all relevant information. So let's get started with the most important change. Update 1 is just an update, so it must be installed on top of the EF2000 Retro add-on version 1.00. Installation is the same as before, simply extract the zip file to your Falcon BMS main installation directory and ensure that you have the option keep file pass info selected so that the zip file correctly extracts. After installation when you have launched the game I'm already in the main menu. As you can see you can confirm the correct version by simply selecting the see it option to the left side and in the window here at the bottom you see which version is currently installed and this is version 1.01. .01. In addition to a few minor database updates, mainly concerning radar sensors for the Su-35S, Su-30SM and Rafale, I have implemented a change uh, affecting the tactical engagement mode. In particular, I have changed the team relationships, so if you are creating a new tactic engagement mission you may notice that NATO and all parties that are allied with NATO, which comprise the United States, Norway and Denmark as they are all NATO members, can only operate from Norwegian air bases uh, because these territory is simply held by NATO and NATO can by default now only operate from Norwegian air bases and the same is true for the neutral states like Sweden and Finland if you create a mission here you will notice Sweden can only operate from Swedish bases and Finland only from Finnish bases that means the relationships have changed NATO is now neutral towards Sweden and Finland. Sweden and Finland itself are friendly but not allied and they are both hostile towards Russia but not at war. This represents a change compared to the original setup that I included in version 1.00. If you prefer the original setup you have the option to do so by simply a copy and pasting the appropriate TMU tag file to the campaign subfolder of add-on E of 2000 Retro. I have included a new subfolder called Options. There is the subfolder TE, and you can here find the two different scenarios set up. Simply enter the respective folder and copy paste the TMU tag file to the campaign folder to use the respective scenario setup. With the update 1 I have of course included the hotfix concerning the powering and depowering of the FLIR and targeting pod sensors. I have called up both pages on the MHDDs just to illustrate it. Both sensors are switched off and you now collectively power them with a left click on the FLIR switch can see they start their initialization process and with a right click 
they are depart again. So the molding key for the laser designator port that was located here on the left glare sheet has been removed. It's no longer required. And I have of course also updated the checklist. That apart I have also removed the ECM band soft keys here from the center MHDD as these were unnecessary leftovers so I have removed them including the callbacks as ECM band selection is not relevant for the F2000 and its internal ECM system. The most comprehensive change introduced with update 1 is the change of the station sequencing. This was necessary to allow more relevant stations to show up on the SMS and SJ pages in the cockpit and to allow especially the drop tanks on the wing stations to be jettisoned through selective jettison. To achieve this I have reduced the number of external store stations to 11 instead of 13 as found in the real aircraft and I achieved this by consolidating the fuselage station units here. So there are only two stations but you can still load uh, two missiles per side so four in total as before. The sequence is different so 10 and 2 are these stations as you can see and this ensures that the wing stations here, the centerline station, are visible on the SMS SJ page and also selectable for jettison. Due to code limitations, uh, these stations will of course show up as well, so everything from 1 to 9 is visible on the SMS page, but the selective jettison logic only permits jettisoning of stores from stations two to eight in theory, that's a code. I have changed the logic to ensure that you can jettison, selective jettison the center and inboard wing pylons on both wings as well as the center line station and with emergency jettison you can also jettison the outboard wing pylons. I have excluded them from selective jettison for the simple reason that you could only select station 3 and this would create an asymmetry that is unfavorable so I have decided to include some only emergency jettison. And for the center lane station I have implemented uh, for the laser designator pod pylon that it can also be jettisoned in selective jettison mode only. That means the pod is retained if you use emergency jettison but you can manually jettison it if required. So let's take a look at how it looks in practice. You see an example loadout. Um, the fuselage stations are on stations 10 and 2 as described. And you can load missiles individually up to 2 per side. Let's jump into the cockpit to illustrate simply the stores jettison functionality. So if you select the SMS page you see stations 1 to 9, that's a code limitation. So the left wing is completely covered. A few left fuselage stations are included here. On the right side we have the center fuselage pylon inboard and center wing pylon and the outboard wing pylon. More are not covered. And if you want to jettison stores, we can only select now the left and right rings, center and inboard wing pylons and the center line station. Let's simply jettison these. If you want to jettison the brimstones and the outboard wing pylons as well, we need to use emergency jettison. And if we want to jettison the laser designator port, we have to do it through selective jettison. This was implemented a way to ensure that you can keep the port. 
even if you use emergency jettison, but you can jettison it via selective jettison if required. So these are the most important changes introduced by update 1, apart from the minor database change, which also impacts some loadouts, uh, which were provided by user Verly083, so thanks for that. I have of course updated the documentation accordingly. So I hope you can enjoy the new update, give me your feedback for it, and yes, have fun, and see you next time. Bye.